Welcome to Unlocked. It's IGN's weekly Xbox show. I'm Ryan McCaffrey. Coming up on this week's episode, we're going to talk about Xbox All Access, a potentially game-changing new program from Microsoft, how you can get your hands on a Microsoft Xbox One X for less than 500 bucks, at least up front. Plus, uh, we've got news about Cyberpunk, the demo that we all saw at E3 is being released, has been released. We'll talk about that. And uh, this head of Microsoft Studios, Matt Booty, has talked about, hey, Microsoft might not be done shopping for studios. But first, just want to let you know, uh, reinforcing that Unlocked has moved to your advantage. You can watch it early on unlocked.ign.com every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And then the next day, it's usual day, Wednesday afternoon, uh, you can catch it on podcast services or on YouTube. All right, again, I'm Ryan. We've got Destin back from hey, Gamescom. Welcome back, my friend. Thanks, dude. Brandon Tyrell. Hello, hello. And Miranda Sanchez back from a week of vacation. Hello. Uh, doing that Dota thing. Doing yeah, that Dota. Hey, Dota. <laughs> I know Dota. people don't like it when I talk about it, so I won't talk about it. But <laughs> it's a ton of fun. It was Whatever. incredible. Whatever. Do uh, it. Yeah, and I just want to say thank you to everyone said, who said hello if they saw me there. I was really happy to find other people who like other video games in addition to Dota. <laughs> Most people who play Dota just play Dota, so it's like kind of cool. It's all good. Glad to hear that the Unlocked family extends mm -hmm. up to uh, the TI as well. So, uh, this, this week did not start or this this weekend was uh, was tough we had you've no doubt heard by now uh, the tragic events in Jacksonville with the shooting occurring at the Madden Championship Series the initial qualifying event was their opening event of the season uh, I I'll tell you I I have been trying to just unplug more on the weekends and not go on mm -hmm. social media as much, certainly not check my work email. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to pop online and uh, saw it start to trend and was just immediately horrified and uh, logged into IGN basically at that point to our sort of, you know, backend systems. And I, I happened to catch it first, so I ended up writing the news story for us. And it was just a... I, I never thought in the... In the in the career that I'm so lucky to have, of writing about video games for a living, that I would ever have to write a a story about a mass shooting, uh, that's that's work for real journalists. <laughs> for, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it was it was awful, and I my you know our our condolences. The entire IGN family extends condolences to the the victims and their families, and uh, and everybody. That was affected by this, either directly or or by the, the the ripple effect of friends or family members or you know who were who were at this. Um, EA, I just want to read a statement. I mean, they issued a couple of statements, which are which we had on IGN right on Sunday. But the CEO of EA, Andrew Wilson, issued a statement today, uh, being Tuesday as we record now, uh, canceling the remaining Madden. Qualify, Madden Classic qualifiers, pardon me, for the time being. He says, uh, we've made a decision to cancel our three remaining Madden Classic qualifier events while we run a comprehensive review of our safety protocols for competitors and spectators. We will work with our partners and our internal teams to establish a consistent level of security at all of our competitive gaming events. And I don't think there's really much else to be said about it. I mean, I thought it would be very odd just i didn't think it would be right to to, not to do anything. a yeah. to do an unlocked here mm -hmm. without saying anything but at the same time i just i don't feel there's much to be said i don't know if anybody wants to add anything else but yeah. that's uh it's i hope we never have to i hope nobody has to ever go through this again but it's uh as the, the the way things are now uh unfortunately all right, there's, it is literally impossible to segue out of that, so I'm not even going to try. But uh, I want to talk about, let's, let's, get, let's talk some Xbox and, and try and uh, get back into the, the fun a little bit here. Mm -hmm. A huge announcement from Microsoft this week. Mm -hmm. This was, I uh, want to give credit to Windows Central, scooped this last week before, it, before Microsoft managed to officially announce it. So a tip of the hat to them. Xbox All Access. Oh, yeah. That is... Uh, Basically, a uh, a monthly payment right. option to get uh, everything bundled together. You get the console, 
either the S or the X. They're at different, different plans. Different price tiers. Yeah. yeah. And lo- Xbox Live and Xbox Game Pass. Uh, so, Destin, I mean, what, you want to go through the details here? Yeah. This is, I mean, this is a huge potentially. It sounds like a phenomenal deal, basically adopting the iPhone sort of strategy that they've been implementing recently. Um, <clears throat> no upfront cost, one low monthly price, 0% APR for 24 months. And that is the key, I think. They're, you're yeah. not paying interest on this. Yeah. That's yeah. why you're, you're exactly right. It is like the phone now where yeah. they just, you can just pay it over time with no interest. And, and here's the good stuff. 24 months of Xbox Game Pass, 24 months of Xbox Live Gold, limited time offer for qualified customers, all brand new Xbox One S, one terabyte, or Xbox One X consoles, including available console bundles, can be purchased with Xbox All Access. No leasing or renting. You own the console outright. Which so is you, great. Yeah, you finish your two-year payment cycle, and you own it's yours. the platform. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. I'd be more excited, but my voice is a little, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little raspy from you had Gamescom. You a heck of a week between yeah. Gamescom, and then you got sick, and then you, yeah. you hit Paris on the on, before yeah. you came home. <laughs> so so it was so it's rough. understandable, but... Um, <laughs> But uh, very excited about this for sure. This is this is a huge and it's a bold move from Xbox. Yeah, the S starts. So, no, so the keyword here is starting. So there is mm-hmm. a credit check involved. Yeah. There is, you know, you, you there there are some, uh, for lack of a better term, barriers to entry sure. for this, even if they're relatively low. But twenty one ninety nine a month, uh, again with the no finance, no interest for an S. But if you want to step up, you want to get an X, and you don't have you know five hundred to to shell it up front, but you can do it over time. That is uh, thirty five, thirty four ninety nine. It's on the month. back. Yeah, thank you. I'm like, where'd it go? Thirty five a month. So, uh, I I am I overstating that I think this is potentially huge, particularly heading into the the next generation that Microsoft's already telegraphed. I don't mm-hmm. think so at all. I think this is like you just said. They're telegraphing that. You know, Microsoft's even from their messaging at E3 has said they're playing the long game. They're playing mm-hmm. for the next, you know, the next console cycle, the next generation. I think this is an excellent way to hit a market that, I mean, by definition, is untapped, which is people who can't afford a console, right? Or people who haven't wanted to drop the money for a console, or that kid who's like, "Hey, mom, can I get an Xbox One? Can I get a PlayStation Four? But she doesn't have the five hundred dollars to to shell out, right? Yeah. Like this allows now a point of entry for somebody. To drop twenty five dollars a month, or sorry, twenty two dollars a month, or potentially more for the uh, for the One X, um, and, and, and get them in and get that market share going into the yeah. next generation. Yeah, and the big point is like it's not just the console. You get Games Pass and Xbox Live, so right. you already have like a good library of games going in. You have online access. Like that's a really great bundle. Right, theoretically, not even theoretically. I mean, there there is a it is reasonable that you don't even have to spend any. You don't other have to buy money anything, yeah, because mm-hmm. all the first party games will go into Game Pass. Mm-hmm. More games will be added to Games Game Pass. So, you, I mean, you don't what, necessarily have to. You can just spend the yeah. monthly fee, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're, there are over a hundred games on there already, and you've got games on there like the Master Chief Collection, which is four games in one. Which, if you dip at all into the multiplayer suite. You know that's hundreds of hours of mm-hmm. of gameplay. So you know, for essentially twenty two dollars a month, theoretically, you never have to buy another video game until you know the next one comes out that isn't going to be included. And here's the thing: once you get into something like this, it's why Apple's been so success successful. You stay, and there there are ways they're sort of incentivizing them yeah. to continue going forward after the two years. They're like. Uh, there's some more on the website. I don't remember exactly what they said, but you can uh, continue to own that or just get in the Xbox Live infrastructure right. afterwards. Yeah. And like you said... You own it once, once it's done. Yeah. Once you're inside that ecosystem, mm-hmm. the you know the the emphasis is on staying... I mean, it's why I have an iOS device mm-hmm. still, right? It's, like, it's why I'm on an iPhone. I would... I've thought a lot about changing just because I pay too much per month for my phone, but I'm in there. I've got my apps. I've got my music. I've, I'm already in the walled garden of Apple. Yep. Once you get into you know the Microsoft ecosystem, you start playing the games. You've got your achievements already. You've got your Xbox Live friends. You've already built a community there. The onus uh, is then on you to decide whether you want to jump ship to whatever the PS5 is going to be or, mm-hmm. or, or stay in your ecosystem with the next Xbox, right? Yeah. Now, I don't want to uh, make any... Huge leaps here necessarily, but um, there, there are no guarantees that this will extend to Scarlet. Right. That this this could be a pilot thing to see how it goes, and they could just have it be a an Xbox One family thing here. But mm. I'll say the timing. I think it's a good time to test it, right? To right. see like how successful it is. What's the interest like? 
and how well it does for them and then maybe try it Wisconsin. Right. It's mm-hmm. it's uh, summer of 2018 heading towards fall of 2018 and you know, we we kind of seem to collectively agree that that Scarlet's probably fall of 2020. Right. Mm-hmm. So right as this, right as you'd be done making these payments, if you if you uh, wanted to jump in this way, there'd be a Scarlet coming that maybe <laughs> yeah. you yeah. roll you could roll into that potentially if if you in you know if this model works for those people. <laughs> And it's smart. I, um, a really awesome guy in the games media who I follow named Jeffrey Grubb over at uh, at Games Beat. Um, he posted something on Twitter that I thought I hadn't even thought about, but it's really interesting. It's like, uh, since this is a financing plan, if you make your payments, you're essentially building credit for playing video yeah. games. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's, it's like, true. this builds credit. You have a credit check. So. Yeah, I mean, this this is this is essentially, it's like a credit card. It's Would have been financing. nice in college. Yeah, right? Built some credit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is this is really smart. It's going to be interesting to see how it ends up playing out, and I hope they do it with the Scarlet for sure. Can anyone speak to? I, yes. Is anybody on the plan right now where you pay X per month and then you just get the next iPhone when it comes out? Well, I, I am be. doing that because mm-hmm. uh, well, do I want to just pay the whole upfront thing right. or? There was no reason not to space it out every yeah. month yeah. because of, because of the zero percent thing. But I don't know if I have. I mean, I don't think I just get another. I don't. I don't even know what the future. I'm fine with this for. I thought. A I thought the years. plan was like you pay 35 bucks a month, and then like every two years you get a new iPhone. I think. I don't think you get one. I think it's you can. By the end, you can of upgrade. That, I mean, it's time. like a. Yeah. You just pay the flat. Right. I don't think there's like a a penalty you have to pay or anything if Got you want to upgrade a little early. Some, something like that. I'm know. curious to see if that's something that. It's every year. It's yeah. every year. Okay. Oh, every year. According. I'm to curious it. to see if that's that's a, an approach they take here, right? Because, mm-hmm. like you said, in two years when this expires, you're left with a decision like, do I want to re up, or is there some way that I can like get a Scarlet added onto my plan, yeah. restart for another mm-hmm. two year cycle? But then I'm curious, what happens to that one S or that one X? Like, well, you still own it. What? You sell yeah. It. You can you yeah. can you return it for like a, a oh, you credit. Know, Mm-hmm. Yeah, credit on a, on a Scarlet or whatever it happens to be, or do you just now own a, two Xboxes? Yeah, the way it works with Apple is you just sell your old phone. Like you you own it if if you don't do the upgrade path. Yeah, and you have to trade it in in that method. But if you just go the pay the full two years and you own it, uh, you can just sell it or whatever afterwards. And Apple doesn't really depreciate in value. Right. So yeah. But is there an infrastructure within Apple to sell your old I hardware did that back? With my last one. Okay. Did yeah, you just I take it to the Apple store and yeah. they give you credit? Yeah. They I did. think it's not not changed. towards this. They it was towards something else, but I uh, okay. I had been eyeing the watch. So I used it to make the watch cheaper. That watch right there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a it's a nice watch. I, like I think you can <laughs> trade it in. You get better if you just sell it on your own though. A better deal. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah always. Yeah. always. But they, they do offer that. Well, right. as long as there's, I mean, I always, at the things like these, convenience is key, right? So I mm-hmm. always look for things that are the path of least resistance. Yeah. If if you automatically get an email saying, Scarlet's out, your membership is ending, would you like to renew for, you know, for $35 a month, mm-hmm. we can upgrade you to this plan, send you a Scarlet, and then we'll send you a box and postage to put your old Xbox in and send it back to us. Could happen. Mm-hmm. Like that is, that is would be the most convenient way uh, that I could see them retain people in this program once the next generation comes by. Definitely. Well, I wonder, I mean, the, the, to clarify, this is a Microsoft Store thing. Mm-hmm. This is not an online offer, so you do need yeah, to go to you have to You have to go stores. into the brick and mortar. Yeah, and... Um, I think that'll change over time, like I think, once I think, they establish yeah. the process. I think you're more. probably right about mm-hmm. that. But for now, Microsoft Store and... Um, shoot, there was something else I was going to... At, I was going to note about logistics of this, and I'm blanking out now, but that's what happens. But yeah, Microsoft Store, and yeah, we'll just, it'll be very interesting to see how this goes. I think it's super forward thinking, as yeah. is Game Pass, mm-hmm. and I wonder if we're going to look back on this in five years or even three, and everybody will be doing it, and it'll be, it'll be standard. It'll just be the common practice. It's mm-hmm. like when you think of Netflix, you're like, wait, there was a time where we didn't just stream everything we wanted to watch <laughs> on our you're TV. Right. <laughs> like, oh, you got discs in the mail and you had to wait for the movie that. Oh you- my god! Oh, man, you're, I remember you're, those days. You're talking about the original X <laughs> <laughs> Netflix. That's- I'm talking about going to Blockbuster Video or Hollywood Video and being like, what VHS right, am well, I? Well, if you get? want to go back that yeah. far, I get, believe me, I can stand toe to toe with you in Oldville. <laughs> oh, I, all day I'm long. sure you can. 
um, I am I am really interested about this though because you know the buy in on this is going to be pretty slim since we're at the end of a console generation. It, are, is it though? Like, I, well, I mean, here's the thing: is I, I'm wondering if it is because this market is serving a people who don't own an Xbox but want one, just haven't picked mm -hmm. one up, or b the market that doesn't own a console, and this is now a good entry point for them. Right. But what yeah. I what I can see is that whatever the numbers are for this. The, the data for number of people who buy in, it's going to be so much exponentially higher when a theoretically five to seven hundred dollar machine drops in two years, and yeah. they're like, "I am not spending eight hundred bucks out the door for an Xbox, but I'm totally fine to spend forty five bucks a month to get whatever the Scarlet is." You know, mm -hmm. so Pretty this true. is this is definitely like proof of concept, and I could see it blowing up once people have had a couple of years to get used to it. Oh, I remember the thing I wanted to say, which is uh, yeah. this has actually. This is not a new idea. This is obviously the first time they're implementing mm -hmm. it, but I don't know if you guys remember way back, there was talk of this, I want to say either in the 360 era or maybe coming out of the 360 era, uh, the, the, this exact thing, basically, of doing a, a subscription service mm -hmm. to, to lower... Of course, Game Pass didn't exist then, and, right. but it was the idea of just, hey, pay less, pay it per month on the, on the console. I, I, I think it was 360. Was live included mm -hmm. in that as well? Not as I recall, okay. at least as the rumor was at the time. But but yeah, it's it's interesting that that, it, that this Microsoft has tossed around this idea yeah. in the past, and now here they go. So it's so cool. I mean, it's just so cool. Microsoft's in total full on market share mode right now. Mm -hmm. Like everything they're doing is aiming at customer service and um, building trust with the community, and also regaining some of their lost market share. Right. Yeah. And and From all the generation. the first party studio acquisitions are mm -hmm. all building towards that payoff I in, in yeah. a couple of years. I can't wait for 2020. <laughs> yeah. And and just want to go to sleep right now and see <laughs> and see <laughs> how it all unfolds. Yeah. Years. <laughs> I want to wake up and be. What year is it? <laughs> oh, the Scarlet is out. <laughs> wow, you've aged a lot in uh, those two years. <laughs> you were yeah. Yeah. Once you hit 34, you like you get the full on old man voice. It's uh, like when you sleep for two years, your voice just goes away. That's yeah. it. You're <laughs> done. Much, yeah. Just and listen to me. I haven't gone a week. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, speaking of those studios, though, Microsoft Studios boss Matt Booty has said this past week to GamesIndustry.biz that Microsoft uh, may not be done acquiring studios. They might still have a, they might be opening the wallet, have that blank check ready to go. Yes, please. <laughs> he, he, uh, Matt's talked to GamesIndustry.biz saying, quote, I don't want to seem like we're going to fill out a quota. It's not about filling a spreadsheet by any means. It's talking about sort of genres and studios, but he says, we will, however, have an interest in studios right now that fit this criteria of 50 to 100 people who are making games on a two to three year cadence and have content that we think will be of interest to our Game Pass subscribers. That means content that is a little different to what our big AAA franchises mm. can deliver. So uh, don't expect them to be buying you know, Remedy necessarily sure. or or Activision or Nintendo or yeah. anything like that. Or uh, Valve. Yeah. Get Dota oh, and bring Dota in the fold, Miranda. Uh, that can't run on console. <laughs> it's too complex. But, all right, first of all. <laughs> but I, uh, I mean, I feel like almost the, uh, not to put them in necessarily this group that Matt is talking about, but the compulsions and the ninja theory absolutely, are, are a little, yeah. you know, they're not the 400, three, 400 person studios. And, mm -hmm. uh, Phil, he he talked about. Remember, we talked about this when when Game Pass was first announced. Phil said, "Oh, at some point, you know, we'd love to have content that's developed for Game Pass." Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is Matt uh, again doubling down, doubling down on it. And so I think pretty soon we're going to see them follow through on. Look this. at the Netflix Originals approach, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully they don't spend four billion a year making content, but mm -hmm. um, well, hey, if they but can, if it's good. Well, it's good for us. <laughs> it's know, not our money. Yeah. Four billion is a lot of money, guys. <laughs> it's not <laughs> what I have to worry about. It's only, it's only worrisome if you're a Microsoft shareholder and That's you're wondering... Fair. <laughs> I mean, apparently Netflix is still fine. That's so right. uh, who knows? I don't. Who knows how any of this I, works? I think a game that would work really well for Game Pass would be something like the Hitman episodic content, yeah. yes. or or the Walking Dead episodic yeah, content, stuff. or the Batman content. Yes. So I, yeah. I, I was thinking the same thing. To me, this says a episodic content, b smaller sort of double A, maybe slight triple A games, but. Mm. A lot of it is going to be games of service, right? You've seen Sea of Thieves. I can think of acquiring smaller teams. And now that now that PC and console development is so much closer than it's ever been before, right? Like it's it's it 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 translates so much easier than it did last generation. Um, you can get you know small teams that are making amazing uh, games that they continuously out like 
just off the top of my head, like Path of Exile is a great ARPG that has been being updated for years and years and years. So stuff like that that maybe isn't necessarily a game as service model like a Fortnite or a PUBG or something like that, um, but something that's standalone and continues to get develop developer support year over year over year. Smaller studios like that seem like they're they're prime for Game Pass. Any any thoughts from anybody on? Any studios that come to mind that could fit this, that could be a... Uh, well, Telltale, you know, brought that up right away. You think, I mean, that that would be a bold move. I mean, because mm -hmm. Telltale, and they're, they publish on every platform, including yeah. phones. Mm -hmm. So Well, they could make just one that was just for Game Pass, that's not, true. not their entire library. That's possible. You know, like a yeah. Master Chief storytelling there's, game. There's <laughs> also nothing stopping them from... I mean, Minecraft, they publish on other platforms. Yeah, that's true. true. That's even though true. they own it. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can see point. that. Um, I actually think you hit it right on the head, Destin. I, uh, IO Interactive could be could be somebody that 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 would be cool. Would be a good fit. I mean, they they own the Hitman IP. They got it back. They're they've got this publishing deal with Warner Brothers mm -hmm. to do to to publish Hitman too. So they've actually moved. They're moving back away from that episodic model that they tested out. Mm -hmm. So I, I wonder. Maybe that didn't work for them. Or yeah. Hitman's you know, been knows? very well received from yeah. what I've seen. Uh, by the community, so yeah, yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, I'm trying to think of. I am well, too, but my, yeah, my brain is mush right now. Pick something like I was thinking Cyber Connect too, because they do like some awesome anime games. It'd be mm -hmm. kind of cool to see Xbox reaching out into that market a little bit mm -hmm. more, because yeah. they're like, yeah, we like anime, and they did, of course, um, the jump game at E3, mm -hmm. and like that was a big thing. Oh, nice. I mean, who doesn't like what, Goku? One of their own IPs, like <laughs> Killer Instinct, would be really good there, but. Yeah. They own True. it, so they could just release that there anytime because they add new characters yeah, and true. new they, seasons. They, and right, the season thing. Mm -hmm. I was just yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's what I got. My wish list would be like <laughs> Japanese developers, like Japanese studios, and like trying to bring those more into the fold and like kind of normalize that more on Xbox. But I know that's always a thing that they're looking forward to and trying out every now and then. What was the last like sort of JRPG focused Japan based game yeah, exclusive? Tales. Like Etrian Odyssey or uh, not yeah. Etrian Odyssey? As far as exclusives go, that's Blue Dragon. Right, you're back in. That's like a let's days. let's like Six, sit yeah. down and pull Tales out. Lost yeah. Odyssey. <laughs> do some uh, do some research for a second. Yeah. 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 Eternal Sonata. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Blue Dragon. Lost yeah. Odyssey. It's, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Thank I think you. that like, those are awesome. games that I really like playing too, but you can't do it as easily on Xbox, where at least they're not exclusive. Not Final exclusive. Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> still waiting. Everybody's still waiting. Yeah. I, you know, nobody will say on either the Square side or the yeah. Microsoft side why. There's clearly yeah. there's some That's sort same. of what has to be a like a contractual roadblock there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like whether it's like a deal with Sony or what, I don't mm -hmm. know. But why wouldn't you put Final Fantasy 14? At this point, Xbox. why not? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a, so it's, long. It re it was reborn as mm -hmm. a as an excellent game that's yeah. been going strong for a while, mm -hmm. Xbox owners don't can't play it. Yeah, it stinks. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. Still exciting, exciting to hear that they're continuing to build that uh, library of uh, studios. That it's going to make the Xbox more enticing to purchase. And then you know our previous story about what's it called again? All access. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just uh, removing that bar to entry. So now you have an easy bar to get into the console. Easy bar to jump over to get into the Xbox infrastructure. Third-party games look best on the X. I mean, yeah. Well, uh, one of the biggest third-party games of uh, <laughs> three. Just clapping over here. I'm like, yay, I'm so glad everyone got to see it. Yes. What, what, what is what is a cyber? Cyber. Cyber punk? Cyber punk. Cyber punk? <laughs> that's Cyberpunk is that 2077. Scandinavian? <laughs> it might be. Cyberpunk 2077, one of the buzziest games of E3. Yeah, I said it. Buzziest. <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just throw out as many gross marketing terms as we possibly can. It's visceral. Show. It's a oh right. yeah. high-impact, <laughs> visceral, gritty representation of a near Levolution. future. I don't know. <laughs> what else I'm going to need a with? vomit bucket and on set here <laughs> in a minute. Dude, I don't remember who it was. It might have been Sid from L.A., but somebody tweeted out a tagline for Cyberpunk that was high-tech lowlife. And, like, if that's not oh. the strap line for our review, I'd, I would be very <laughs> upset. That's really good. Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 was really good at yeah. E3. Uh, we all And at Gamescom. I watched it again. Yeah, we all got to see it. And now uh, everyone can see it on IGN. Uh, they, they ended up, they, they did sort of a cryptic stream 
where was it though? <laughs> well, <laughs> what I mean, could like, we be revealing? Cyberpunk posts a stream that says starting soon or or was starting and, upload. No, and you're like, yeah. all right, what is it going to be? But it could have been. Yeah, it could have been like a it's behind the scenes documentary. It could have been concept mm -hmm. art. Can you trailer. can you even imagine a world where CD Projekt Red has been teasing this footage <laughs> since E3, and then they come out with a with a dev diary behind the scenes about. What yeah, I can see that. What it takes to sculpt I can see that. Yes, I can. I can't. I, okay, no, but if it was just like a slideshow, then that'd be something. I, I, I could not see that. I think there would be a riot. On, in, well, hi, everybody. In chat. Here's our design doc. It's just all text. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No gameplay. Thankfully, it didn't come to yeah. that. We got the 48-minute gameplay demo streamed after a 10-hour Was it on up. for 10 hours? Yeah. Started at 1 a.m. Pacific earlier this Sneaky. week mm -hmm. and then aired at 10 a.m. The gameplay started at 10 a.m. I'm so happy that um, everybody has had a chance to see this footage now. The stuff that we've been talking about since E3 and uh, get to see why we're hyped. And I asked people on Twitter what they thought. And most of the reactions were basically what we had the first time. Like, wow. Yeah. And what I thought was interesting was like when I the reactions to my reaction tweet to it at E3, mm. there was a lot of people freaking out that it was first person. People were just not like the, the idea of yeah. that did not sit well with Witcher fans. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, it's good. Well, I said it's basically <laughs> a, a Deus Ex on steroids. Mm -hmm, and yeah. I meant that in the nicest way possible because Deus Ex is, right. was and is a great series. And hopefully that makes more sense to people now that they can see it for themselves. Yeah. I mean, I, I maybe you guys disagree. I, I feel like it's there's a lot of Deus Ex-like characteristics to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, with that level of combat, like that you see it constantly escalating throughout the demo, I wouldn't want to play that in third person because I think it just would feel better in first person. I and I think it's a lot more exciting and faster paced. And like you just feel really in it when you're yeah. like that. It's such a weird world that, like, I think when you're looking at it as an outside observer, it's hard to really. Maybe not hard, but like you put all the pieces together, you're like, oh, okay, a weird cyberpunk world. Like, <laughs> that's different. That guy doesn't have a jaw. He's just got a robot thing. Mm -hmm. But when you're in it first person, suddenly it's this very like alien, foreign experience where you're in, you know, I mean, they talk about immersion and using the first person camera angle as a, uh, or I'm sorry, the first person perspective as a tool to mm -hmm. enhance immersion. And I think when you're in a world that is an alien is and as alien and weird as cyberpunk is, mm -hmm. like putting you in that first person helps to really ratchet up that discomfort and that, you know, insecurity about what you know and what you don't know and what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So like when you have to resuscitate that that unconscious wo woman in the yeah. in the bathtub where it's just like you get tossed the little like stim pack thing. Yeah. You got to pulp fiction it right mm -hmm. into her chest. Exactly. Yeah. Or or that part where you're in the garage and the the I forget the name of them, but the modders, the guys who take it, <laughs> who take a cool thing and take it too far. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like yeah. when he's straight up, like looking at you and he's six inches from your face mm -hmm. and you see like just this little robot thing inside moving where his jaw should be mm -hmm. or his cranium is open. Like in a third person, you're, you're thinking, oh, that creepy robot zombie is talking to my man. But in first person or woman, this or, or woman, sure. Perspective. Um, but in first person, you're like, that is a really jarring thing yeah. to see something that is really humanoid jarring thing. Yeah, I got oh, you. God. I got you. Seeing something that is humanoid, like <laughs> making these weird clicks and buzzes in your mm -hmm. face, you know? So I, I think just changing that perspective to first person really puts you in this world where <laughs> where you're 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 wondering what the hell is going on in here, you know? Versus so just watching it like an observer. Yeah. This is the third time I've seen this demo. I saw it at E3 Gamescom and now this video that they released. And JR actually saw it from the male perspective. Uh one thing that he noticed that changed changed was during the uh the scene after the first mission where the, the lady's in her apartment and there's a guy there and he leaves. Uh, for the man, it's there's a man there also. So they're very open to sure. letting people make their decisions about who they're attracted to in the game world. Uh, the differences that I saw in my demo is like we got to see a, some sword action that was going on mm -hmm. uh, with a sword that reflects bullets and then like cool. slices people's legs off. That yeah. was really fun. I spotted that this time around when yeah. she go in the beginning, when she goes into mm -hmm. her uh, her arsenal room or whatever to pick up her pistol. Yeah. You see on the wall there's two places for samurai swords. Yep. Yeah. I thought that was really, really They're cool. really cool looking. <laughs> yeah. And then so uh, for this game. the other thing that changed is at the end of the Jeez. demo that's publicly available right now, the woman's still alive, the kind of really mean lady <laughs> that makes oh, the, you do the mission the for corporate. Oh, right. Yeah. So in the Gamescom demo, they flipped it and the guy 
uh, like we betrayed the lady, right? We mm. told the we told the mech guys that, hey, there's a virus on there. It's Militech or whatever. So, yeah. so does that fight break out still? The fight. Well, they purposely built it out to show off the combat. Like yeah. they throw a right. grenade because they make fun of your jacket, so they throw a grenade in there and then start the combat. Like, story. But okay. they could have like just left the combat. It's the they could have <laughs> just left. So that, yeah, don't make that fun was of my jacket. Really, really, really interesting. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so at the end of the demo, it's not the lady at all. It's actually the guy who she was holding captive, and he offers you a corporation gig. And anybody that knows the cyberpunk world yeah. would know that uh, that is actually a whole like faction that you can align with the the corporations. Yeah. And uh, it was just really really cool to see the alternate outcomes, even for such a little decision, and the different paths that you can take for this one scenario that I've now seen three times. Yeah. It's really cool because they tell you these things, right? Mm -hmm. And until but you then when you see, see them, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's like, I remember in the demo, they were like, we could have just not called her or not talked to her at all. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, choose your own adventure. I get it. <laughs> but then to see it and see how drastically it changes, which yeah. led to a fight over a jacket, which, you know, <laughs> so, so perfectly CD Projekt Red. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I, I actually just scrubbed through this one. And uh, in the original demo at E3, they like... They let them scan the chip or whatever, and their brains get fried. Oh yeah. So oh. is that what happened in this one? That's what. I, uh, and that's the, that's what happened in my E3 demo. Oh uh, okay, mm -hmm. cool. I I haven't watched the one that they released in its entirety yet, but yeah, I didn't most get to watch of this stuff. All of it out. yesterday. I had yeah yeah first day I back from vacation. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not low key bragging. I've seen it twice. No, yeah. I, I assume I love, it was similar. But I love talking about the okay, play, I played Crackdown it. multiplayer <laughs> first, <laughs> Cyberpunk already. Yeah, and it's not even out yet. Miranda, what what did you like? What made you like this demo so much? I'm just kind of going back to that first point I made. It was like escalation. So I saw Cyberpunk demo about midway through the day of them doing demos. And everyone, of course, was raving about it. And I was just like, I mean, it's a demo. It's an hour long. Like, yeah. There's a lot to prove there, right? It's right. like, okay. And then you sit down and you're like, oh, well, this is cool. And it just constantly builds on everything that is neat about this world and like what they want to give you here. And like knowing how well, you know, obviously The Witcher played out, like yeah. it just speaks to how well this could be as 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 well. I said well three times. But anyway, this could be well, a well, really well. cool game. Yeah, well, well, well. <laughs> huh. Uh, and I mean, like, you just see so many side activities and people to interact with and, like, things to do. And this that <laughs> that just fills my heart. Like, I just want to explore and, like, be a part of this world, right? And I think yes. that's why I do like first person. Um, I prefer first person games if I can get them, but I also don't mind third person. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, first person moves will probably, you know, looks like it's going to be good for this this game and like I said the action is just incredible like when they just ramp it up at the very end like you mm -hmm. you can't you can't be you have to be excited <laughs> yeah how could you just be like well that was fine yeah. I mean it's just so incredible of like how they emphasize like that you can kind of do whatever you want with your character of like if you want to be like a hyper tech hyper tech ninja or whatever you want to be or like a mm -hmm. big gunner or robocop or however you want to like <laughs> outfit your character like that promise is really exciting and I'm ex just want to see more of it What's funny is like looking at that city, I have similar reaction, but it fills my heart also, except yeah. with anxiety. <laughs> because I look at that and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do but it. So why are you anxious? You don't have to do the wiki. <laughs> That's true. But yeah. I do have to play it. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm that dude that like clears out every room before I go into sure. the next one because I don't want to miss anything. And I mm -hmm. save all my potions for the final dragon or whatever. Uh, and this just looks like, like it makes me visibly like uncomfortable thinking about every box that I have to open <laughs> in Night City. Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of this too, of like what they showed for this part of the city is just more about talking to people. It doesn't look like you actually interact with much in the world. It's like you're not going to yeah. be picking up every single thing you find. I'm curious. But there's a lot yeah. to observe and to see. And I like seeing how much level of detail there already is here with all the signs and how well developed, like this, the idea of the city and how much alive it is. Like there's, you know, promotional art for other things. There's advertisements. There's, there's a police department right there just and so many just restaurants and just it's like a real city and that's really cool so they did yeah. discuss further development of like uh the crowd tech like mm -hmm. how they're gonna deal with all these pedestrians and stuff just randomly walking around you so i can't wait to see how that looks out uh the demo from e3 to gamescom also there was definitely a visual improvement on the gamescom build really? Oh, really? yeah i know i thought it looked 
noticeably better and they've had some time with it so so we yeah when we were watching it yesterday i thought it looked a little worse but i th- well i think it's because twitch it was stream it was streaming off of twitch yeah, yeah was, you, know, so. the, you get the compression and the you yeah, got the 4k it's, my point now yeah on, so on so the compression we didn't i didn't get a chance to see like that mm-hmm. visual improvement that you were talking about i imagine they were running whatever the best looking version of this of this demo was right. mm-hmm. i think uh, another have, point oh, sorry go sorry ahead. another point i'm really excited about is that i heard a cat in an alleyway and i really <laughs> want to pet those cats so give me Ro- some cyber cats. Robot cat. Yeah. <laughs> With one metal paw. I'm Aww. like scared to see like what pets have become in 2077. <laughs> it's just you, those you robo just have dogs. A, a shark? Yeah, it's basically the robo dog from Mega Man. Yeah. yeah. It's just like <laughs> Sparky, ladder. I, and want, he's just, <laughs> I want a shark on wheels. Can I like pull it around? Just a shark on wheels? Yeah. 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 Why not? Uh, we do have the direct <laughs> like Gameplay, mm-hmm. as opposed to just a mm-hmm. you know a stream, a captured stream. So yeah. that's so it, on IGN and, and our YouTube. If you want to take a look, it'll be full quality minus the compression for YouTube or yeah. IGN. So, do you yeah, feel like you notice a lot more going around the second time of watching this? Like that was something I heard from a lot of people saying. Like you go back to this demo and you just notice so many more details. Like yeah, I was able interesting to interesting points. I was definitely able to pay attention a lot more to the smaller things, like just recognizing from. <laughs> I, I played a little bit of Cyberpunk 2020, which was the pen and paper game yeah. mm-hmm. by Michael Pondsmith that this is based on and just uh, the text that they decided to use and the character creator and such it all sort of reminds me of aspects of that that pen and paper adventure that yeah. we I got to experience as well as like we saw earlier in the footage that we're airing right now there was a list of guns on the wall yeah. and like that's yeah. right out of the book basically or at least Their that visual and style and yeah. and well obviously the names and the character types are are from that that world that Pondsmith envisioned and it's just neat like they really really nailed the feeling of the pen and paper game in this world and I I can't wait to play it. So The Witcher 3 released in 2015 it was IGN's Mm -hmm. 2015 game of the year. Sure was. So you know and they've been working on this uh, in some capacity or another for even longer than that so Mm -hmm. this is already a you know there's been a lot of work put into this and you know we have no release date. I personally don't think it will. Uh, I think it's a next gen game. That's not to say I know with Xbox, like mm-hmm. there may be a version of this yeah. that runs mm-hmm. on an Xbox One cross generation. But I, yeah, I, I don't. I think for all intents and purposes, I believe this to be a next gen game. But that's just me talking. I'm not basing that off of anything but my own intuition. I'll be playing on PC for sure for this one. Yeah, better upgrade. Get that. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? The 2080. I did pre order one. <laughs> did oh, you really? Yeah. Don't know if I'm going to keep it. Yeah, we'll oh. see. What? Didn't they sell it really fast? I, I just remember the price tag on it. <laughs> so I felt bad for you. Oh, man. Well, um, yeah, I, and speaking of, of how it looks and how long it's been in development, I know CD has been really anxious about showing it off to everybody, which is why it, they took so long to, to sort of release it publicly. Um, you know, you remember when The Witcher was first demoed and then it mm-hmm. came out and people were like, you know, red markers circling cracks in the walls and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just to again reiterate, as you can see, if you're watching the stream, it's totally a work in progress build. So they also uh, say it verbally like three times in the beginning you of the game. You have to these days. Yeah. It, it really it, right? is like like please like knee jerk reactions. Like we all think it looks cool and promising. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also got a number of years left of development. So let's let's sort of table our judgment. I mean, my right. my pessimistic fear. Uh, I try to be optimistic, but if I were, I'm super optimistic. If I were so. to allow for pessimism, <laughs> my pessimistic fear would be that you know this work in progress does not represent the final look of the game, but mm-hmm. that this would be vertical slice, and that the final game will not, will actually look worse than this. Yeah, that's my. Yeah. That would be the pessimistic I mean, we've, fear. We've definitely had that before. We've, we've seen we've it before. That's why plenty of games like that. Yeah, but we've seen that before. I think, I think Watch Dogs put a lot of people on that sort of oh, nervous I mean, it's edge. A, it's a tale as old as time, dude. It's been yeah, happening I mean, forever. Right, right, right. There yeah. was <laughs> Aliens, Colonial Marines being one of the most <laughs> famous <laughs> examples. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, like, this is CD Projekt Red. Like, they know what they're doing. That's the like thing. Yes, so. Exactly. so that's that's where we hold that faith from, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I'm right now 50 hours into The Witcher in my second playthrough, and I'm still playing it every week piecemeal. I have the utmost faith these guys are going to deliver mm-hmm. just one of the best games of of the year whenever this comes out. Coming when it's ready. I mean, they, they've seemed to be uh, you know again this dumb thing that we have to talk about now, but like the sort of marketing alignment uh, appears to be with Microsoft on this one since this debuted at. Microsoft stage at E3. So, mm-hmm. you know, I my factoring in my belief that this is a next gen oriented title, I would not be surprised if we see this early in the Scarlet window. 
Mm -hmm. uh, particularly, you know, who, we don't know what's up with PS5. We, we don't know what's up with any of them. But mm -hmm. if Microsoft can beat Scarlet, can have Scarlet to market before PS5 and I love and the gun anime. If, who knows if this if fits Cyberpunk is a yeah. launch? Yeah, if it if it fits right in that window, that's you know that could be huge for them. But that's that Man. is doing some serious holy crap, projecting Ryan. right there. Like that's <laughs> holy crap. Making a lot of 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 uh, leaps there in a world where <laughs> Scarlet comes out six months to a year before PS5 with Cyberpunk as a launch title. Holy crap! Well, I mean, micro they they've done it before. No, the I three, know. Three sixty had Oblivion, had yeah. Ghost oh, Recon, yeah. Advanced Warfighter, had uh, Fight Night Round Dead Three, uh, Dead Rot. Well, that was just a straight exclusive. I'm talking about games that did eventually. Oh, may, yeah, migrate so over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had some si Bioshock. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there's you know the three sixty killed it in that department. So you never know. You never my, know. My favorite small thing. We just saw the engineer like hack a box, and when you open it, there's actually physical parts that are moved around so in detailed. there. And I'm like, that is an attention to detail. You really usually you yeah. just smash the thing yeah or something <laughs> yeah like that gun and burn. and it's really nice to see something organic like that. Yeah, I think so. her nails are painted. I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. I like the aesthetics of like yeah. a really good looking RPG. And it's like if you can get down to the details, like that's. Mm -hmm. I'll bet absolute. you. I'll bet you ten bucks you can paint your nails different colors <laughs> when this game uh, comes out. <laughs> I believe that will be a thing. So <laughs> I believe it. And how every gun is its own so. character. Each has like like that shotgun the the character is using has like its own animation oh. when you when it comes out and all the things yeah. lock into place and like the sword had a thing too and so did the the high powered uh, assault rifle that they get later. It's I'm I'm enamored by what they've managed to do with Cyberpunk and I I hope. I hope this is pretty close to what we get for the final product. I mean, what I, you know, what what's hopefully happening here is that uh, CD Projekt Red is an independent studio who basically got to keep all the Witcher money. They mm -hmm. did not have to share it pretty much with anybody. I think Witcher Two, they had a distribution deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, with Nam I want to say Namco. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Namco Two. Yeah, and but if for all intent, compared to most AAA games. They've kept all the money, and the, the Witcher series sold huge. So, what I, what hopefully that means is that all that money is rolled into this game, and they'll again keep, get to keep all the money on this game. And hopefully, it's just a snowball effect mm -hmm. where they're able to do bigger and better things every single time out because they they control their own destiny. Which, yeah. uh, you know, they don't have to answer to a publisher's. Uh, deadlines or or give them half the cut that's rare these days yeah, exactly Especially for games of this caliber exactly and if no you'll allow me an anthem joke the damage numbers are perfectly sized take that change them <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah, gamble's yeah. Li probably listening to this <laughs> sorry gamble they already promised you'd be able to tweak <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah, what yeah. more do you want i know i know you change the opacity <laughs> it's be fine it's fine all right, so we'll be keeping, obviously, the closest of, of eyes on Cyberpunk 2077 in the coming uh, probably couple of years. Mm -hmm. What it's most likely going. Hey, it is what it is. We'll be we delighted a, to see whatever's next. We have a date. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. All right. Uh, I want to go Brandon Tyrell's way next for hey. the Marketplace Report. What oh. is happening out there? What can we spend our money on? Et cetera. Well, I'm glad you asked because starting today, <clears throat> Tuesday, August 28th, you can get Bad North on Xbox One that's also enhanced. It's a tactical strategy game uh, with procedurally generated uh, islands where you're soldiers, uh, you fight, all kinds of stuff, and it's a procedurally generated tactics game. Um, Pro Evolution Soccer doesn't really need an explanation there. It's a soccer game. Yep. Soccer, uh, you say. Got a really good review on IGN. For yeah, those it did. Who are footy fans. That review went up yesterday, a, I want to say. There's a few of them, Ryan. Footy, footy fans? That's what Football. it is. That's the thing. It's fine. Everyone's allowed. Uh, <laughs> Strange Brigade, also out uh, on the 28th. Is oh, also got a pretty good review yep, on IGN. Yeah. Uh, too, if you yeah. don't know, it's a multiplayer third person action adventure game. Um, Kill the Undead on the Xbox. Yeah, I, I played it at uh, E3, I think. Kill it was. the Undead? I, yeah, it was fine. I don't know. I The review turned out. The, it got a better review than my initial impression. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's good. That means there's mm -hmm. more to it, and, you know, glad it turned out well. Yep. Uh, so you can check that out um, on August 28th, which is today. Um, next up, again, also out today, is uh, whew, Miranda, I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> Chicondo Soul Eater? Ch Nailed it. Chicondo? Yeah, that. Chicondo Soul Eater. Um, it's a bullet hell shooter that takes place in a unique Asian mythology inspired world. 
Um, this next one is called Soul Eater's an anime. Just want to throw that out there, and it's really good. But I don't think these are related. Oh, okay. Well, Soul Eater's not a bowl. Play this, then watch Soul Eater, the anime. <laughs> <It's fair>. um, <laughs> this next one is is fantastic name Splash Blast Panic. Okay. Yeah. So Sounds um, like that is a very fun summary kind of name. Yeah, and the, ga- the game itself kind of nails it. It's it's a multiplayer competitive party game. You shoot, ram, dodge, and bully your opponents with a variety of water gun weaponry. See, uh, mm. you know what? I I criticize, a lot, I playfully criticize a lot of these ID at Xbox games yeah. for for what I perce- what I believe to be terrible titles. That's a great title. It is. Yeah, it's it's fu- it brings a smile to my face. It's a happy has a happy connotation to it and it describes exactly what the game is. What's this game about? Three on three freestyle. You just said what it's about. No, this next one, three on three freestyle. Oh, well, uh, I associate freestyle with, with like BMX extreme sports stuff. Destin basketball. Yeah. It's a street basketball (laughs) game uh, where you pull off slam dunks, alley-oops, no look passes and outside shots in competitive games. I like street basketball games. They're fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Daisy is also available uh, tomorrow, August 29th. Uh, everyone knows what Daisy is, but it's open world MMO survival sandbox. Is, it, is that the is that game preview on Xbox or? Uh, yes, it's yeah, out okay. on game preview. Cool. Um, you know, in a post apocalyptic world, so you know what that is. Also, Wednesday, Twin Robots Ultimate Edition, a unique co op swapping gameplay mechanic uh, inside a challenging puzzle game. Uh, Friday brings us the Amnesia Collection. Uh, August thirty oh, first, wow. you can get all three Amnesia titles: The Dark Descent, A Machine for Pigs, and Justine. I forget what are the first two about. Scary stuff. It's a scary, scary um, the, game. You go insane. First one's about a descent into darkness. An amnesia joke. It, just like, <laughs> <laughs> it really did. I totally didn't pick that up, and I'm a little embarrassed by it. Um, what an episode we have today. I know. Uh, We're all very tired of dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not at all jet lagged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, on Friday, you can get Naruto to Baruto Shinobi Striker, which is a 4v4 fighting game featuring all your favorites from the Naruto series, Naruto, Sasuke, and Team 7. Awesome. Um, lastly, The Video Kid uh, comes out on August 31st. Sounds a little bit like Paperboy, but um, inspired by the 80s and addictive gameplay, Video Kid literally wears blah, blah, blah. You throw VHS tapes at, you the, throw at your VHS, neighbor's porches? You throw VHS oh. cassettes through mailboxes to you, make some oh, cash. Oh, is Paperboy. To take your girlfriend out on a date. Oh, Paperboy's gonna sue. Dodge mindless bystanders, pull off some epic grinds on the hoods of cars, and avoid the cops to stay alive. So it's Paperboy, but you're on rollerblades or something? Oh, all right. I'm wondering, or roller skates? I don't That's know. Twist. I remember Paperboy. I'm, sorry, I'm talking about the arcade version with the handlebars specifically. Oh, my oh God. I Game never saw that. Absurdly difficult. Like, yeah. I just remember it being like really, and granted, I was a kid, so maybe it was just that was part of the problem, but... How did you throw? Like, what did you... Uh, I think there was a button, button on there. A button yeah, on there? buttons on there. I would love if there was, like, a string with, a, like, a it. fake <laughs> paper and just, like, this to throw. That'd be great. I played it a bunch on NES, and I remember being just infuriated by the... It was the hard. I, it was, yeah, it was tough I there, could, too. There was always a dog that would run out of a yard and, like, chase you down. Yep. Yeah, that game, boy, I, it was great, though. Yeah. It was a cool game. I'm surprised there hasn't been anything else until this. It's a revival. Yeah. Now we're... Hurling VHS tapes. I mean, the, you know, the, that They're sort of... They're fragile. That, you can break a VHS tape. It's just so easily. <laughs> uh, that generation of games is slowly coming back. I mean, yesterday we got the Streets of Rage 4 announcement. That's true. Um, Windjammers has been coming out. Basically anything Stephanie Shop Same developer. ...works on, yeah. The Windjammers folks. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, and they also did uh, Wonder Boy, right? Yes. Yes, indeed. Cool. Well, that's it. Um, you can check out all those games this week on uh, Xbox Store. Fantastic. All right, let's do some trivia before we hit the road. Carlos from New Mexico, his gamer tag is Old Man Noob 76. I like that. Uh, he asks, before the original Xbox launched in Japan, Japanese developers hated the Duke controller. We, that's a well-known story. Seamus Blackley told that story in here. This caused Microsoft to quickly develop the controller S, which launched uh, with Xbox in Japan and then was later released here as well. What was the code name for the controller S? I didn't know this. I actually don't either. uh, Carlos taught me something on this one. I feel like I should have known this, but now, thanks to Carlos, I do. So uh, the code name for controller S in Japan, uh, you remember the the code name, this is a regular thing at Microsoft and probably pretty much any other game company. The 360 gamepad, the code name was Krypton for that one. (laughs) Uh, That one I do know, but... So, Controller S, was it codenamed Tsunami, Akira, Duke Slim, or Akibomo? 
Uh, I'll take a stab at this. Uh, a, I, I don't think it's C because I think that's too on the nose. Um, I don't think it's Tsunami because I think that's a little insensitive. Um, I think it's probably B, Akira. Okay. I was going to say B also. Miranda. Well, I like the movie very much, so I'm going to go with B. <laughs> Everybody going Akira. Everybody is wrong. It was probably it's, D, right? Yes. It's Akibomo. Yeah, I was going to yeah. go that too. So I, Carlos stumping everyone. For some reason, I thought it was Get it all wrong, everybody. Oh. Cheering for Olana here. <laughs> it's no fun when you want to burn it down. <laughs> I thought it was a Kimbo I'm here for to some bring reason. Chaos. But it's no. all good. I'm here to bring chaos. The ghost of Alana re- somehow remains in front at 10 points. Did you give points. her extra points that I gave her? <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> that didn't I was count. host. No. That didn't count. Uh, it counts in my Just because your house sitting doesn't mean you can rearrange <laughs> the furniture. Uh, yes, you can. Brandon <laughs> creeping up at n- nine points, so maybe next week. We Straight can. creeping. Yeah. <laughs> don't No, don't do that. Uh, uh, Miranda at six, self-sabotaging her way just to, to, <laughs> to victory slowly. <laughs> and death well, at least stay ahead of me. New to, a newly returned to Unlocked. To unlock whatever show this is called, uh, but two points. So. I'll start trying someday. Yeah, you got you got some ground to make <laughs> up. Join me, Dustin. Yeah, join me on the dark Do you side. Do you want to talk about these that were just announced today? Like before we hit the air, holy crap! It actually happened. Yep. Please the, take it away. The games ga- with gold for September. All right. Yeah, games with oh. gold for September was announced just a short time ago. Um, on Xbox One X, Xbox Live, and I'm reading straight from Major Nelson's blog right now because we didn't see this before we came in here. Uh, Xbox One, uh, uh, Xbox Live Gold members can download Prison Architect, the Xbox One edition, for thirty bucks uh, for free during the month of September. Live Lock, ten bucks, will be available as a free download from September sixteenth to October fifteenth. So its MSRP is or estimated retail price. Is ten bucks. Well, skip oh, that I've, skip I that. don't even know what Live Lock is. I've, mm. I've never heard of it either. There's, what else you got? It looks like Destiny. Well, now you can know what it is. Wait, apparently. Okay. No, it looks like it, like oh. robots on the front cover. Um, on the Xbox 360, starting September 1st, Lego Star Wars 3: The Clone Wars, twenty bucks will be free for uh, gold members through September 15th. So two weeks on that one. And then finally, September 16th, uh, gold members can download Sega Vintage Collection Monster World uh, mm. for free until September 30th. So on 360, the first half of the month is Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. Second half of the month is Sega Vintage Collection Monster World. Uh, seems like we might get... Pr- seems like Prison Architect is highlighting this, this month. Yeah, maybe uh, the fall season, Microsoft's trying to get you to buy new games <laughs> rather than play the free ones. Cause, Ma- yeah. Eh. Make sure you get Forza Horizon 2 because that game's going bye yes. bye. 100% okay. make sure you get oh, Forza Horizon oh, 2. Oh, yeah. If you don't it's download it now, the you'll, lose, you'll lose it forever. But yeah. they're not turning the servers off, correct? Yeah. After they oh, stop playing just it. Not sure, game. but yeah. And that, yeah. that's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I read somewhere that's due to licensing issues. Yes. They're losing that's the license to a bunch of songs. And so they have to Ooh. stop selling it. Maybe the cars. Or maybe the cars as well. Yeah. yeah. Possible. Um, but once again, Prison Architect Xbox One Edition, free be, all month long, and then live. Don't quote lock, us on that. Free September 16th to October 15th. Excellent. If you want to try, uh, I don't think I mentioned this. So please participate in the Unlock Block Trivia Challenge. If you want to try and be as cool as Carlos and stump everybody, send your Xbox trivia question, including <laughs> four multiple choice answers. Note the correct one in your email. Send it to unlocked at IGN.com, and we'll play next week, and we'll see if Miranda can uh, accidentally get one right. <laughs> I don't no. like this. No. I don't like this at all. No, I like this even more. <laughs> I, I, I dislike this. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's time to get out of here. You can find me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. I also would love it if you would check out IGN Unfiltered, monthly interview series I get to do. We have uh, Cam Weber, the head of EA Sports. Um, obviously, this was filmed long before... This past weekend's events, so there's none of that. It's uh, just about what it's like being a basically a sports executive and a video game executive mm-hmm. at the same time. Uh, really, I thought it was a really interesting conversation. Uh, Destin, yeah, follow me on Twitter at Destin Legary. I have some embargoed stuff coming out tomorrow uh, from the Nvidia event about the 280. 2080 Ti RTX yes. uh, graphics card. So be sure to just keep an eye on Twitter. I'll tweet about it once the embargo is up. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to show that off. Also, mm-hmm. Brandon, tune, tune into your Twitter for sweet pictures from Paris. Yeah, that's right. I had un baguette, un baguette, monsieur, <laughs> and madame. 
<laughs> you, said, you said it was really good, though, right? Like uh, it, it, was it was not phenomenal. just like this cliche tourist thing. No, 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 amazing. That one was very, very good. I got uh-huh. one at the Eiffel Tower that wasn't as good, though. Did they put get, a bunch of butter on it. Did you get gelato? Because I know every time you go to Rome, you get gelato. I couldn't find a gelato spot. Oh, I bad. did go to a fancy French restaurant, though, and they had they got a uh, rhubarb pie, basically. And I got that, and I got a uh, uh, almond ice cream with the brownie thing. I just got two desserts because that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I'm like, also, yeah. also totally yeah. on point for you. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really good, and I got a uh, turkey club sandwich. Hey, <laughs> it was actually really good. Uh, they know how to make their food. So follow Destin for pictures of his turkey club. Um, I yeah. am Brandon Tyrell on Twitter. You can find video game stuff. I sometimes post pictures of a dog. Um, uh, let's see. This week I have a review coming out. It's embargoed until it's tomorrow. It's your dog, to be clear. It is my dog. <laughs> it, say dog. Andrew Goldfarb. It's not like <laughs> Andrew who's just like, hey, I was in the subway and I saw this dog, so I took a picture. Hope that's okay. <laughs> it's, probably um, fine. it's probably fine. Owners are really cool about letting people take pictures of their dogs. I think it's just like when you pet them. Don't you just to d- don't touch to without permiscu- permission. To ask. Mu- to always good to ask. Museum rules apply. Don't touch the merchandise. Look, but don't touch. Um, I have a review for Divinity uh, Definitive Edition coming out tomorrow is when the embargo's up. Um, we had a bit of an issue with a code, but uh, it'll probably be up a little bit after embargo. Um, so look for that tomorrow. Other than that, lots of Xbox stuff coming down the pipe that still can't talk about. Fantastic. Miranda, take us home. All right, you can find me at Havoc Gross, and that's Havoc with a K. I have just finished off all of my Dota tweets, so you're clear from that if that's what you care about. Um, I am catching up on a lot of stuff. I have a super secret project that's launching in September. Um, also still working on the IGN First, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so please check yes. out that stuff if you have not yet. A couple more things to post yet. Yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah, finishing off the month of August. Pretty strong. And then uh, this Friday, we have a special Xbox panel at PAX to West. Oh yeah, oh, by today, the way. Right. This is the week we can uh, promote <laughs> yeah, that. We have yeah. to leave. We're going to leave on Friday. We'll be there. We'll be there. Come yeah. say hi. Yeah. Uh, if, I were, if I were a good host, I would have the information about that in front of me. If, I forgot to, to grab it As to where and when you ran. can see that. Yeah. At, but it but is, it's Friday it's for sure. Friday in it, Seattle at PAX. And I, I don't, it's in I, the afternoon sometime. I don't 100% know the time. I think it's 3 or 4 p.m. I think but, that sounds about right. But check the uh, PAX schedule or... I'm sure we'll post an article on yeah, check IGN. I'm definitely plan on tweeting it sometime soon. So yes. if you guys oh, are yeah, at PAX, please come say hello. I think Ryan and I will only be there for that day. Yes. Yeah. And then um, the rest of everyone else will be there for a few days. So Yeah. So I think Tom, uh, John Dornbush, and uh, Tom Marks and myself will be there overnight. So I think we might. We're talking about maybe doing a meetup, but we, I mean, everything's fallen into place last minute. So we'll let you know if that pans out. Fantastic. All right. We'll see everybody next week. Oh, and uh, I guess I'm supposed to add too late. Oh, we're back. Oh, See, hey! I brought the show back from the dead. <laughs> oh uh, find us every, remember you can get the show early. Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on unlocked.ig. Did you see that was magical what just happened? <laughs> unlocked.ign.com. Get the show early. Tuesdays, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Goes everywhere else 24 hours after that. There, I did my due diligence. Zach Ryan, <laughs> that was for you, buddy. Love you. Okay, really? Fade out again. Go away. Go down. Go away. Go away. Bye.